Tim Blanche Shapiro, Divorce 661, Daily Perspective, Day in the Life of an LDA, Episode 45. I hope you guys are all doing well today. I have 11 big topics to go over with you today. You're going to learn a lot in this episode. And I wanted to start by saying, make sure you guys are asking questions. I know a lot of you are doing your own divorce and have questions uh, about the process, something maybe specific to you. I'm going to start going through the comments and answering them in future videos. So get your questions into the comments on any of the videos. Uh, I'll be going through those. Uh, today's Wednesday, uh, January 24th. We're almost through January. Jeez. Um, super crazy busy we've been. I'm going to go over uh, my stats real quick for today. 10 consultations, lots of people calling. Some people schedule their calls. Some people just leave me a message and I get back to them as fast as I can. You can go to my website, divorce661.com and schedule a consultation and a time that works for you. Of these consultations, we had a uh, new judgment reject case, uh, people who called us because they've tried to get through their divorce and had trouble and hired us. And this one was in Van Nuys and we already took care of that today, got that approved. I'm amazed that people spend years on their divorce uh, only to call us and have us finalize it in a day. And in many cases, getting it approved the same day, especially with LA County. Uh, two new cases we filed for LA County. I guess, again, everything's e-filed. With LA County, we already got those cases filed, and we are working on the settlement agreement for those cases already. Uh, approvals, uh, talk about timelines of judgment approvals. We had three approvals today. Um, Alameda case, Alameda County uh, took 45 days for approval. That's good because they were usually in the two- to three-month range. And Riverside, we had two Riverside judgments approved uh, come back today, and <clears throat> uh, they took two months which is also good. They were both uh, submitted almost on the same day. We mailed them out a few days apart, but we got them both back today. Okay, we're, again, I told you I have 11 things to talk about. And number one is this. I want to ask you, how many years will you struggle to do your own divorce? I just told you a few minutes ago that um, you know we have people that have cases, old cases, you know, up to five years old. We've done cases 20 and 25 years old, but those are people that thought their divorce was already finalized and it wasn't. They found out later in life that it wasn't. But we're talking about cases that knowingly uh, or people knowingly are trying to get their divorce completed and they are struggling for years. Uh, this week, we've had cases from 2021 forward and uh, they've struggled. Multiple rejects. Some people just gave up and a lot of time went by and they finally We'll find a video and of mine and realize that, hey, we can take over and finalize your divorce. And there's always a handful of errors and we can finalize those cases. So, you know, they struggled for years. They call me. I will review like 50 pages of rejected items. And then as long as they're in agreement, I, I correct everything. I amend everything. They e-sign everything, assuming it's LA County. Otherwise, they still can just print it, sign it, notarize it, mail it in. But um, we get those done usually the same day, maybe two days. If they need to get me some terms or some account numbers or some property or asset information, it might take a little longer, but we get those prepared as soon as they get those terms to us. And if it's LA County, we e-file them and sometimes get same day approval. Can you imagine you've been struggling for your, with your divorce for years. You call me, we fix it, we, you sign it, we file it, and it gets approved the same day. It's possible. It happens every day. Number two, I'm going to talk about some documents you never want to file. In this case, we're talking about the appearance, stipulation, and waiver Form. This is FL-130. If you're doing a default with agreement, a default, no response being filed, if you file this FL-130 um, appearance stipulation and waiver form, it will trigger a $435 court filing fee. Why am I bringing this up? Because we had a case, and where was it at? I want to say it was Alameda County um, or Sacramento. I forget what county it was, but they had filed trying to finalize their own divorce, they had filed this appearance stipulation waiver and the court accepted the form, but then said there's $435 due on the case. So they were doing their own divorce. They hired me and I looked up their file and, and the county actually showed on the case summary that they owed $435. So I told them, I said, hey, um, you guys got to pay this 435 because you guys filed this appearance stipulation and waiver, which triggers this fee. And he said, well, let me go try and talk to the court and see if they'll remove it. And I said, you know, they're, the fact is they're not going to. The crazy thing is, is that most courts, every other court, in fact, if we filed that form or you tried to file that form and, and you tried to turn it in without the fee, they would reject it. And that's the better way to do it. If they reject it because you didn't pay the fee, 
then it's technically not filed. In this case, they accepted it and they would not remove it because it was filed by both parties and they triggered that appearance fee of 435. So you do not want to file that. I see that in many of our uh, judgment takeover cases where people are having problems. I'll see that they have tried to file that. And uh, again, it's not necessary in a default with written agreement type case. Number three, clients who started with us, then one spouse gets an attorney. So what I want to talk about is when you're going through the amicable divorce process with us, you're going to want to make sure that you're, you and your spouse are in agreement on everything. Make sure you're on the same page. Maybe Make sure you guys talk to each other or you inform your spouse you're going to work with us prior to starting. I don't know what it was that caused the wife in this case to get an attorney. Maybe a spouse, husband wasn't speaking to her or they weren't you know, having good conversations or they weren't amicable. But what happened here was I uh, we started their case. We, we drafted everything, settlement agreement, everything. They didn't end up signing it. And the next thing I know, they had attorneys and I uh, didn't hear from them for a while. Then today I had um, we got I saw an approval on a settlement agreement come through the e-file system for L.A. County. And it was these these clients that I hadn't heard from in a few months. So they had attorneys. They both ended up having attorneys. They didn't go to trial. They didn't go to court. They didn't uh, have any hearings. They, they read through the settlement agreement, was, which was exactly the same settlement agreement that I had drafted, uh, agreed on everything, each keeping their own assets and debts, no alimony, no spouse support, no child support, again, joint legal and physical, and, so, and they're all keeping their own pensions. So what was the issue that made them have to get an attorney? They had the, the exact same settlement agreement. And I, I look, they each had spent $10,000 each on their attorneys totally unnecessary. I had already done all the paperwork. I don't know what happened with them, but they're done. I think the point of the story is, you know, for the same cost, for the, the attorneys who are doing the same service, if you guys are amicable, why would you spend $20,000 on attorney's fees if you can use my fee for, you know, my service as a flat fee? Didn't make sense to me. I mean, they're divorced, but they spent a ton of money unnecessarily. Sometimes it's the, you know, just the drama between the parties that they, they want to fight. And guess what? If you want to fight, go right ahead. It's going to cost you money with attorneys. Number four, when one spouse is the breadwinner and 50-50 on everything, even though one spouse was the main person working. So this was based off a consultation I had uh, today. Two, in fact, where the spouse, um, there was a bread, one was a breadwinner. One, one was the man, one was the woman, um, doesn't matter. And the questions were, why should I have to give... 50% of everything I've earned when the other spouse hasn't worked. And the rationale in that is that let's say you're the working spouse and your wife stayed at home or your, your spouse stayed at home and they watch the kids. And so the rationale is they weren't able to work because they're watching the kids. Assumably, I'm sure there's, there's uh, plenty of folks that aren't working and there's, and there's adult children or, there's no reason they shouldn't be working. But in any case, the, the thought process with the court and the reason this exists is because you're at home taking care of the kids, that's why the person working was able to work so much, promote, make a lot of money, go to work every day because you had your spouse taking care of the kids or at home taking care of the family or the household or just the house in general. So that's why that happens. And I can and, there, and, and you can see the different viewpoints. The person who did all the work is thinking, I worked all the, I did everything on my back, my pension, my 401k. Uh, I, earned, I earned the income. I paid for the house. Like it's, it was their money, but it, you have to realize it's, it was yours combined. The two of you, the money is community property. The assets are community property. The house is community property, even though one spouse paid for it. So you can see how one spouse would feel, Hey, this is mine. And the other, but on the other end of it, keep in mind, like with this other consultation, I was talking to a, uh, the mother of the daughter who was going through this, and she was the the mother was the I'm sorry the um, the wife was the breadwinner, and I said you know, and there was a, they were saying I hope that he will not want any of her pension or half the house or alimony or child support because he doesn't work he doesn't he hasn't worked he doesn't have any money saved, I'm like he does have money saved he's you guys all this is collective between the two of them, and it's I said it you know the thing is. I get why you would want to protect your daughter and say, you know, no, no spouse support, no nothing. But if he's not working, has no income and no savings, he's almost forced to ask for alimony and child support and half of everything. Because even if he doesn't want it, he really has no money in his pocket. Or, I mean, what's he going to do? He has, he's going to have to just to survive. So that was the conversation we had with them on that. And uh, I said, they need to sit down and talk because, you know, you, you're going to want to, 
have that conversation to see which way that goes. One of the things she had said is, you know, I think I, I said, hey, have they talked about it? If there's going to be any spouse support? And she goes, no, she doesn't want to have that conversation because she feels like if she brings it up, then he'll say yes. Guess what? You have to bring it up. You can't. And I get this all the time where one spouse says, hey, I don't want to bring it up. It has to be addressed in the settlement agreement. There's no getting around it. There's going to be a spouse support order attachment to your settlement agreement that's going to say one of three things. Yes, there's going to be spouse support and how much for how long. No, there's no spouse support now or ever or there or reserve jurisdiction where there's no spouse support now, but possibly in the future. But you can't just ignore it. You can't just not attach a spouse support order to your judgment and just not talk about it. It has to be addressed either way. Have that conversation first before you hire me. Because I said, have they had this conversation? She said, no. I said, they're all getting along. They're all friendly and uh, everything seems good. I said, yes, until you start talking about money. Have that conversation. Write it down on a pad of paper. Say, you know, this is what I, I'm proposing. See how it goes. See if you guys can reach agreement. And guess what? If spouse... If the husband decides he doesn't want anything for whatever reason, the court does not going to interfere in that. You guys can do whatever you want by agreement. It may not make sense to other people, but people make decisions of an unequal division of assets and debts all the time. I can definitely tell you that. Number five, spousal support termination. Um, what I want to talk about is on the petition itself, when you're filing for divorce, you have three options. I kind of just went over that but this is for a different topic. There's three options. Yes, you want spouse support now. So you'd mark yes, spouse support to your petitioner or respondent. No, you don't want spouse support now so that, or ever. That would be terminate the court's jurisdiction. And then there's reserve jurisdiction. You don't know, maybe you will, maybe you won't. So you can mark the reserve jurisdiction. There is a box that says other. And what people do with that box is they'll, they'll mark the box other and then put no spouse support. You don't want to do complete your petition in a way that would cause your judgment to be rejected. So Instead of none, don't fill in the blank. Don't write in things. You, there's, there's usually no reason you have to write anything on the petition, uh, especially with listing assets and debts. But when it comes to the boxes for child custody, child visitation, spouse support, et cetera, you're not going to – don't write other. Mark the appropriate box. And if it's, there's no spouse support going to be requested or paid in the petition, you're going to want to mark terminate. That's what that means. Terminate means none. Number six. The petition is superseded by the settlement agreement. So if you change your mind on requesting the petition, such as custody or support, you don't need to amend the petition. There's only a handful of things that will cause your petition to cause your judgment, errors on your petition to cause your judgment to reject. But just simply if you change your mind on something, for instance, let's say in the petition you marked that you want spouse support. Uh, or that you don't want spouse support, it doesn't matter. But then when it comes to the settlement agreement, you guys decide, well, there's not going to be spouse support or there will be spouse support or something other than what you request in the petition. You don't have to amend your petition in order to get that in the default with the agreement settlement agreement because the settlement agreement will supersede the request in the petition. So I've, I'm saying this because I had a case this week where they had already filed and then amended their petition. And I asked them, why did you amend your petition? Everything seemed correct on there. They said, well, I marked that I didn't want spouse support, but now I want to amend it to say that I do. I said, do you guys agree that there's spouse support? And she said, yes. I said, then we don't need to amend your petition because we're treating this as a default with agreement versus default without. Okay. Number seven. Question that came up on a consultation day, they said, hey, Tim, can you really get the divorce approved in five weeks? I saw on TikTok that you can get your divorce approved in five weeks. And I said, yes, only in LA County though. And here's why, because they allow for e-file of the entire divorce process. And this is what this looks like. We file your case today. We get the case number issued. The very next day can be the quote unquote date of service. And that's where we'll start the clock on the six months. And then 31 days later, I can turn your paperwork in for review. And then it's usually a same day, next day, two, three days max in most cases with LA County to have your judgment approved. So that's why I say I can get your divorce approved in five weeks. Now, check this out. This is number eight. I can actually get your divorce done in LA County in one day, same day service. And here's how this is done. Again, only LA County because of e-file. So where in with the prior five weeks, the reason we have to wait the 31 days is because you have to wait that amount of time before you can turn the default request or default and default judgment package. But that doesn't apply 
when a response is filed. So if you want to get your divorce done in a day, and I've already done this once before, is we on day one, first thing in the morning, I file your petition. And usually with LA County, we'll have that back in about 20 minutes. As soon as I get that case number, I immediately file the signed response. And that has the same effect of being served. So now on the same day we filed, we have the, the jurisdiction date starting. And because it's not a default case, we don't have to wait 31 days to turn in the settlement agreement. And they had already completed their settlement agreement terms. I'd already drafted it. They'd already signed and notarized it. So as soon as the response was filed and I got the, uh, copies of the filed response, which was like half hour later, I turned in their settlement agreement, all their final judgment package. And because we got it in around 10 a.m., it was approved by 4 p.m. the same day. So if you guys want uh, same day divorce filing and approval, we just pay, we file the response and do it as an uncontested case. It will cost you an extra $435 in court fees, but can you imagine having your divorce done the same day approved by the judge? Number nine, how can I predict your divorce date? Talking about the six months and a day, the, cool, uh, the six month cooling off period in California, it's six months and a day from the date of service. Uh, and we can, I can predict your divorce date because I'm the one doing the filing. I'm the one doing the quote unquote serving, which is actually you not being served. You are being served, but you're just signing what's called a notice and acknowledgement. No one's going to come out and serve you uh, at work or home. It's just a document you're going to electronically sign. And I just date that the very next day. No big deal. And then if I count out six months and one day from that date, that's going to be your final divorce date. No matter when we turn your paperwork, as long as it's before that six month date, which generally it is. With our cases, especially with LA County, but with every county, if you're starting with me, we're going to have their case filed, the date of service being the very next day, and we can turn in your paperwork, as I mentioned, 31 days later, and the court time, let's say, is two to three months for approval in most courts, so we're going to have you done around month three, month four, two months prior to the six months. So they'll approve it. We can submit it for review. They'll approve it. Your official divorce date will be pushed out to that predictable date, I can tell you, six months and a day from the date of service. With LA County, we're getting our divorce cases approved on weeks, you know, after 31 days. So I just say week five, just to account for a couple of days for the judgment review process. But those cases, even though they're approved and signed and they're totally done, their official divorce dates pushed out that six months. So even though we're in January, we're getting July uh, final divorce dates Again, I always talk about the fact that nothing's going to happen in July. You're not going to get any other paperwork in July. You just won't be married any longer once that day passes. Number 10, I already discussed number 10. We're talking about making sure you guys talk uh, about everything, money, tough decisions, spouse support, child support. Don't go into it blind. Don't go in it. Don't go in uh, on a wish and a prayer. Talk to your spouse about um, the terms you guys, if you guys want it to be amicable, communication is going to be, be key and you're going to have to talk about, Hey, um, I would prefer not to pay spouse support or, you know, but are you going to ask for it? Yes or no. Here's our incomes. Go over the needs of the parties. Talk about custody. Talk about all these things, especially if you guys are on the fence. Like when people call me and I'll say, Hey, have you talked to your spouse about starting the process? And they'll say, no, I said, well, do me a favor. Please don't pull the trigger until you've talked to your spouse. Talk to them about our service. Talk to them about the terms. Make sure you guys are going to be amicable, cooperative, and agree to use my service and will agree on the terms, even if you don't have them figured out, just that you guys will agree to agree. That's good enough for me because I don't want to take your money and then you find out that the, you guys aren't amicable. We start the process and there's no agreement. We're just, we're going to get stuck. And we won't be able to finalize your divorce. So have those discussions. And number 11, do you need a notary or not on your settlement agreement? I would say you need it in most cases, but I'm going to tell you specifically when you do and don't, and then there's a loophole with that. So if it's a default without an agreement, the respondent really is the only person that needs to notarize their judgment because they haven't filed a response. They haven't made an appearance. So it's the only way that the courts can verify who the parties are is by having their, um, their uh, signature notarized on the judgment. If it's an uncontested divorce case where there has been an appearance, a response, or an appearance form filed with the court, then generally you do not need a uh, notary, except there's some exceptions to that. And I want to go over that. So in a default, I'm sorry, in an uncontested divorce where a response has been filed, generally you don't need a notary. But I've seen the courts ask for a notary. If you're doing something out of the ordinary, sometimes it's been as little as uh, one of the spouses keeping 100% of their pension. Um, and, you know, and not being divided. They've asked for that to be notarized so they can get proof that that, that was signed by the parties. But mostly it's on long-term spouse support 
waiver. So if you've been married over 10 years and you're terminating spouse support, because the general rule is that uh, spouse support would be maintained, uh, jurisdiction would be maintained indefinitely. It doesn't mean there has to be support, just the, the court has the ability to award it if one party asks for it. So I've seen the courts ask for um, a notary, even though a response has been filed on that. In most cases, what I'm doing is just having my clients both notarized just to alleviate any issue of potential. You get some weird clerk or some judge that decides that, hey, I want a notary on this and they reject it. I prefer not that not to happen. Um, it's simple to get a notary. Um, so I, I usually am having, in most cases, unless it's clear cut, like a, a response was filed, short term marriage, a little bit of property, you know, they, they can terminate support because it's not a long term marriage. No problem. Those are fine. I, in fact, with LA County, they don't have to have original signatures. The whole package can be electronically signed. But if I see that uh, it usually would meet the criteria for not needing a notary, um, if there's something in there where it needs it, I will have the parties do it just to prevent any rejection. Uh, whether it's a, a response was filed or not, I'm generally having both spouses notarized. Like I said, it's not a big deal. 15 bucks. Uh, to get it notarized uh, through our e-signature platform. It's also $15 if you do it together or $25 if you do it separately. Again, ask your questions in the comments. I will make sure I go over those questions uh, in future uh, videos. But I hope you enjoyed episode 45 of the Divorce 661 Daily Perspective. We will talk to you tomorrow.